we did it, folks. We read the second Elder Scrolls novel, the one second. of two. Second of last, yeah, there's only there's two. There's only two so far, um, probably forever in our livelihood. Will there be two Elder Scrolls novels? Uh -huh. I can't um, see making another one. This came out in 2011. Um, it's called The Lord of Souls, and it's written by Greg Keyes. Uh, let me see who wrote, who did the cover. Book designed by Liz Cosgrove. So in, on the cover, it's this like yellow, black and white. Yeah, it's like sepia tone. Uh, there is a tree with not a lot of leaves on it, and that's by a lake. And then in the background of the lake, there is a walled city with a giant tower. Can you and guess what city that is? The Imperial City. It's the Imperial City. They keep talking about this tower the whole time. Uh, then there are two moons or suns or something. Uh, and then there's the floating city. And the floating city has, like, a water... It's, dra it's draining. Draining from it? Is it? How do they pick up water? I don't know. It's magic. Okay, so the back of the book. 40 years after the Oblivion Crisis, the Empire of Tamriel is threatened by a mysterious floating city, Umbriel, whose shadow spawns a terrifying undead army. The fact that the city is called Umbriel, but there is also a person called Umbriel. But he's not just called Umbriel. But he's not just called Umbriel. I don't know why he's got to have multiple names. And then there's... Because it's not really his. Um, the sword is called, like, um Umbri um Umbris, something like that. So I'm like... Because the city... Okay. I, I guess there'd be spoilers, but... Well, we'll get into we'll the, get all into, the names, but... Yeah. It's at the very end that you learn. There are way more people and names in this book than there was the last. Uh, reeling from a devastating discovery, Prince Atrobus continues on his seemingly doomed quest to obtain a magic sword that holds the key to destroying the deadly invaders. Meanwhile, in the Imperial City, the spy Colin finds evidence of betrayal at the heart of the Empire. Though his own heart may betray him first. And an Aeg, trapped in Umbriel itself, has become a slave to its dark lord and his insatiable hunger for souls. How can these three unlikely heroes save Tamriel when they cannot even save themselves? Uh, we're missing the fourth subplot. What? Which is, there's a fourth so. The last one has oh, three yeah. stories. This, this one has one, four. This one added uh basically like <laughs> back to you down below, you know. Yeah, we're getting we're in what's all the events from all over the Our place. Our weatherman who's yes. uh an orc lady and a wizard guy. They're hanging out fighting the undead and so sometimes they're they'll like cut back on to the them. front lines. They're yeah, like, it'll cut back we're to them. Fight all the dead people. Talking about the undead aka they call them the wormies, yes. <laughs> which is adorable. <laughs> It's so it's so less threatening when they're like, oh, look at all these wormies. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the second book. Uh, definitely don't read this if you haven't read the first one. It is a continuation right off of where we left like, off. Like, right off the bat. So, the last one. Um, we do have the recording for the Yeah, the we do have the recording book, for the first book. If you can't get the first book or don't care to read it, you can... You can um... spend, like, an hour listening to us talk yeah. about the entire plot uh, in detail. That was when I was playing Oblivion, so I had a lot of fun facts. Um, I have less fun facts this time. <laughs> well, I definitely had to go back and listen to it because it's been over a year since we read the first one. So I forgot who all these people were. And they're a uh, subquest. Um, what did you think of this book before we jump in? I liked it. It's a. It's probably this series has been the best that we've read in this entire book club. <laughs> yeah, it was re well written. Uh, there were some parts where I was really confused about what was happening because there are very like short snippets where he cuts back and forth between the characters, and then the fights last four paragraphs, and then you're like, oh, okay. I would say this one he kept it pretty like once the chapter started, it was that character until their perspective. Yeah. And then near the end of the book, it was switching between them. But I kind of expected that because once the group started to mesh, mm -hmm. you were like, okay, yeah, they're going to all come together and, and mesh and talk about like, stuff. Well, I guess because Colin meets up later, but like they don't all come together. Not all of them. No. Yeah. It's like this person meets that person and then they meet someone else, but never all together. 
Not the whole cast. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I think we gave this both a four. four. I liked it. Um, there's definitely some inside jokes. We're on Fable, uh, if you guys want to follow us on there, um, or if you just want to read our little yeah, we snippets. Put, we're putting memes on there now. Yes. It's just between the two of us. So. Quotes. So if you, I mean, you don't have to read along with us. You can just read us being. I don't think sassy. our next book is on Fable, so we might have to do it for the next one. <laughs> we can always. They're pretty good about adding books too. But yes, we definitely got a little sassy in this one. So do we need to talk about the characters really quick first? Like a previously. Yeah, in... previously on the Infernal City. That Infernal City. Uh. Well, we're all in, they were all in, like, Moral Land, right? Or did you have some of them in Moral Land and some of what them? What are you talking about? Like, well, how, where did they start? Where did Anna Eid start? Well, she was from the Marsh Land. Marsh, yeah. I with... that was called Moral Land. No, that's not Moral Land. It's yeah. a different place. I don't know. They had a lot of places, a lot of names. She lived uh, near, near the, the Argonians. That's Black why she Swamp. knows Glim, who's her, like, BFF Argonian friend who is in the city with her. He can breathe underwater. So I don't know what Anaig is. I'm assuming she's an Imperial. She's got like... I thought they, they said, said she was like a human. She's human. She's got like a big nose. Well, there's a bunch of humans. Yeah. Black hair, green eyes. And then you have... She's got a magic necklace that allows her to communicate with other people. Yeah, uh, I don't remember that necklace's name. Ku? Ku. <laughs> Ku. So it's like a locket, and so she can see someone, and Ku then ends up going to... Um, Atrebus. Atrebus is the prince yep, of the Imperial City. The prince of the Imperial City. And he is like comic book Mr. Hero. Yeah, it's but like he has been lied to his entire life and people were just faking the All hero lie. thing. So he thought he was hot shit, but he ain't shit. Uh, he can't do anything. They would like weaken enemies before he finished them off yeah, just to make totally him look lie. good. He didn't know. He thought he was like... He thought he was cool. But yeah, it was all. So he found that propaganda. out last book, and, and he tried to. From a it. bunch of people died because of him, and he's like, "Oh, oh they're like, no. hey, don't you know you're this? You're the joke in the you're a joke inside circle." And he's like, "What?" And he's and matched lie. with this dark elf uh, or Dunmer named Zool, who is a sorcerer who has a dark past. Who has a dark? His dark past is basically that he. I think they talk about this in the last book, where mm-hmm. he knows the guy in charge of the floating city. He wants to kill him. That's his whole plan. Because <laughs> that had to do with the downfall of his city, right? It, yeah, it has to do with the events that happened in Morrowind and all that stuff. So they know each other, and he has to stop him because he feels, I guess, not really responsible, but, like, he knows him, so he's going to stop him. Yeah. And then there is this other guy named Vile, and they are all princes. Calabitus right? Vile? Oh, the yeah. Daedric princes? Yeah. Yeah. So he's the jokester prince guy if you've played skyrim he's the quest with the dog uh and they need to get his sword which you can acquire in i think both oblivion and skyrim um and they need that sword to basically kill the floating city yeah the guy in charge so that's what they're up to that's what atribus and sewer are up to they that's met quest too. somehow <laughs> i don't remember um Anna Eag and Glim, who are BFFs, they get sucked up into the city. She has, like, a flying potion that they take. Yeah. She's an experimenter. She likes to try to make potions and stuff. And try sometimes to they work, sometimes they don't. But they only seem not to work when Glim's involved. <laughs> she doesn't make it for Argonians. <laughs> and so they made it on Oblivion, and then he gets put in the swamp because he can breathe underwater. The swamp. Swamp. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's not the swamp. It's the swamp. <laughs> uh, and she then gets taken to this kitchen where we find out that th- that they take their food very seriously. It's Top Chef up in there. Yeah, it's chopped is what it There's is. There's like a bunch of different kitchens and a bunch of different lords have different tastes. Like one requires like a hundred course meal. One requires to eat stuff with fear embedded in it and stuff or like like dead things like it's not just food it's emotion that they're eating because they um when the island goes over places it like kills people and sucks up their souls and that's what these people are consuming yeah and then things that die then get put in the soup and get reborn so Mm -hmm. if you die on um umbral 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 i can't then you uh get reborn from like a little sack thing but you get reborn as an adult yeah, you just, it, it's like echo chamber or whatever it is. It you ages you. Cloning yeah. ages you quickly. 
So there are no kids. There are no kids. And so she is get put into this kitchen. And then in the last book, her kitchen got raided and everyone got killed. Except for her and Sly. Sleer. Sleer. And <laughs> um, they're like, oh yeah, this is a regular occurrence where... Where kitchens just get raided like yeah. that. And, and they just murder everyone. And that's okay. They got permission to do that too. Yeah. Like you find out in this book. Uh, anyway, so she's part of a different kitchen now. Uh, Toll, I think. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning. So do we miss anyone else? I guess Colin. Got... Colin. Guess where Colin's from? <laughs> oh, where's Colin from? Uh, how many times do you think they actually said it in this book? We probably should have counted. I think like four, but he just brings it up way too much. Yeah. And he brought up a lot in the last book too. He's like, I'm from Anvil. <laughs> it's it's dreary and dark and sad there. And also I killed a man on a bridge once for, for the cause. Yeah, it was for his initiation. Yeah. And then he's got a real issue with it. And it just keeps, I mean, he's probably killed a crap ton of people since then but this one really stuck with him and so it will continue to stick with him he's part of like the secret agent empire force yes and what he was i totally forgot like he's on a research mission like the brotherhood or whatever it is it's not the dark brotherhood it's a different group i forgot he's like a monk he does research yeah he does research um he reads all the tomes i think he got assigned a new mission after the last book because he was assigned to the atropus case because atropus went missing yeah and then they're like yeah we don't really care about and that he's dead. <laughs> yeah they thought he was dead and colin's like but what if he ain't and they're like well that's stupid we're assigning you to something else now <laughs> yeah he's got to find a connection and he very quickly decides that that's not really worth his time so so he's he sticking with the atropus thing well because in the last book uh he went into this place and someone summoned a daedra and it killed everyone in a room and he was like well this is a big deal Uh oh, a big case need to stick with this one he's no longer a junior detective so yeah, i think that's this book like the last one was in three parts there's a prologue and an epilogue and then you listened to it on spotify i did how was the audio it was good i like this guy i like this narrator he does a really good job what kind of voices does he so do? He's very, like, old man British. Oh. But he does really good women. He, okay. like, switches them up, and, and he does cool accents, and he makes them sound, like, very Alice in Wonderland and crazy when we're talking about people on Umbral. He mm. gives them fun accents. He's probably the best audiobook guy yet. Let me see what his name is. And then I read the book. Um, you said that, so, in each part, the chapters restart. So it's, like, part two, chapter one, but... It's just, like, listed as chapters throughout the whole book, right? In the audiobook, it just keeps going, and because... Does it... Did it include the prologue as chapter one? It said, like, opening credits, I think. Okay. Uh, did you get ending credits for the epilogue? It just said epilogue. Okay. Uh, after chapter, I think, ten, or... It just keeps going to eleven and twelve, but the guy reading it says part one or part two chapter one okay so it's just how it's so it got kind of confusing so it was narrated by michael page okay and uh he did a really good job it's a really good audiobook it was pretty it's pretty easy to read um again some of the things were kind of confusing um the character development i think we both liked the dialogue is sometimes (laughs) funny yes (laughs) i'm like what i very much flesh melting into flesh it's super gross but <laughs> i i don't know it's very descriptive but like i don't hate it yeah <laughs> it doesn't sound like pompous it sounds kind of just goofy and i like the way the characters talk to each other okay we are you ready um i also want to say i don't think in order to read these books that you have had to play an elder scrolls game no i think you could have you could the only confusing like thing is maybe the argonians but if you just look that up You'll find, you figure it out. Because yeah. I remember you thought Miracle was like, is he a mermaid? <laughs> I just pictured him as a lizard man. You remember the last episode where you were like, I don't know what he is. I don't know what he is. And I was I like, he's a lizard him. man. And yeah, you're now, like, what? Oh, that makes so much more sense. Yeah, the first time I thought he was a merman. And then now he's now I get the... That's the only one that I'm like, maybe. But I, I feel think... like they were more descriptive in his face and stuff this time. Yeah. Okay, we're going to spoil this entire book. Uh, let's get to getting its opening credits. <laughs> Part one. Prologue. Atropus's belly is cut and his guts are spilling out. Yeah, what an opening, by the way. Like, holy crap. Yeah. I op- <laughs> It started out with- it's so gross, too. The yeah. way they described it, He's I was like, like trying to push him back Ooh, in. He was like, ew. oh, that's not good. 
Soul is dragging him. Uh, he and Soul have failed to stop uh, Vuhan, which is, as we'll find out, the lord of the castle of Umbreal. the floating city, yeah. Umbriel. Um, and they are cast into another realm of oblivion. So, after, as they start... Uh, he's dying, he's covered in ash, and he has these visions, uh, that, about his dad on the throne burning, and then there's a woman with a porcelain doll that looks like him, and then he wakes up next to a naked woman. Was she naked? Yes, they both were. sure? Well, he was naked. Yeah, they both were naked. Um. Silhansa. It's probably not even how you pronounce it, but... It's an Altmer woman, which, if you know, that's a high elf. Mm. It's a golden elf right there. So we are in oblivion in the realm of Malakal. That's a spoiler. <laughs> no, that's what it says, like, right after it. Oh. The Daedric Prince Malakath's realm of oblivion. Mm -hmm. She introduced herself as Salthasna <laughs> and asked Atrobus to tell her his story. And so your quest is ended. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the quote from the from the so prologue. He, she's asking him some weird questions, and he's not even paying attention. Well, he just basically kind of explains the events of the last book very briefly. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to tell the Malakoff story? Um. So she has him tell him like the. So he's talking about this legend or this kid story that he's heard about Malakoff. She asks, like, what's his plans, and how does Atropos know about Malakath? So Malakath tells him a childhood story about where how Malakath came to be. And it's a poop story. Yeah, so this is actually true. This is the... <laughs> uh, I, I, There's a couple of poop things I in looked, here, and I'm like, what is happening? I looked in, in to, I was like, is Malakath really a poop man? And it's, yeah. So... So is He's the like Malakath Trinime in poo form is what I wrote. In the game is like the Lord of the Orcs. Okay. So I was like, oh, is this gonna be like a very orc centric story? Not really. We got like one orc character yeah. who does not care about Malakath at all. Um, but uh, he was like a knight. I don't. My notes are bad because they're paragraphs. He was like a knight of yeah. someone else, and then he was helping people on the road. Until eventually one of them ate him. Yeah, so Tr Triname, I think, is what his name was. And then he got eaten and, like, pooped out. And then he became Malakath. <laughs> I'm like, this, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> the, like, elves that still worshipped him were the ones that became the orcs. That's the plot. Hmm. Uh, and then... Because people were disgusted that they worshipped this poop man. <laughs> Get ready for more poop. Um, so as he's telling the story, uh, Silhansa is like, what? That's the story? Like, she gets mad. <laughs> yeah. That's a terrible story. Why'd you tell that to yeah. me? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, she asked how he knew about Malakath. Yeah, and he's like, and let he me tell honest. you this childhood story. And he was like, this is how I learned about it. Uh, then we find out that... Kids love poop. <laughs> Silhansa is Malakath. Mm -hmm. And I put, is a large pigman? He's an orc. Okay. The description made it sound like a pigman. <laughs> Malakath reveals that he has healed them and asks Sewell, who's also there naked, <laughs> what to do with them. Uh, Sewell asks that he and his companion be released, and Malakath asks why. Sewell replies to destroy Umbral. Malakath doubts this uh, as they have failed before, but ultimately agrees when Atrobus cuts in, stating that they failed because they did not have the sword Umbra. And is this where we're introduced to Mazgar and Brennus? Uh, oh, and they're like, Sewell still has vengeance in his heart and really mm -hmm. wants to kill this guy, and Malakath's like, ooh, that delights me. <laughs> I love that. Let me send you on love your Love that for you, trip. Sewell. Uh, Sewell believes the sword is in Solstheim, so without Malakath sends them to Solstheim. Mm. Solstheim. And then, <laughs> um, so now it's Atribus and Sewell is substory one. They're not gonna show up for a while. Yeah. This is like, I think Mazgar and Brennus also don't show up for a while. Yeah. Afterwards, so it, we're still in the prologue. Uh, Mazgar is a orc. 
Yes. And Brennis is a cartographer slash magic person. Yep, he's an imperial wizard. And so she is like his bodyguard. They're investigating rumors of Umbral and they spot it and determine that it is a bubble of oblivion, which we kind of already figured out from the last book. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're looking for the floating island and they run into the Wormies. The Wormies, which is the dead army. That's just underneath the city following it as it moves but sometimes they branch off and yeah. like fight other people you have to be the forward they fight scout. some of them and like one of the teammates dies and gets resurrected as a wormy mm. and so they scouted and that's what they found out <laughs> all right are we on one part one chapter one uh colin is kidnapped but is saved by latine uh is her name latine aris yeah, looks like it. And so she will be called by both Latine and Aris. She will. Which, I'm like, stick to one name. I get that you have a first and last name, but just call everyone by their last name or their first name. She's 31, she's got blue eyes and short blonde hair. And she knows all his business. And this is where we get the recap of who Colin is. <laughs> yeah, where's he from again? <laughs> He'll tell you. Remind me, did he kill a man once? <laughs> oh. Again and again. That's like his, like... That's his thing. His thing. He's like, I gotta tell you where I'm at. And I'm did you Anvil. forget about me? I'm from Anvil. If you remember me? I'm the guy from bridge. Anvil who killed somebody. <laughs> That's me. I'm Colin. Um, so we find out that she actually hired the kidnappers who she killed. She killed the yeah, people she hired. She killed them to avoid be them becoming suspicious. She shows him a small wolf to... Wolf? Wolf. Wolf. You know people who say... Wolf, wolf instead of wolf. Yeah. Like wolf. It's a wolf. It's a wolf tattoo. <laughs> uh, the branding of Emperor Titus mm -hmm. Mede. This whole part was Mede. confusing. I think it's Mede. Mede? It's Mede. Mede? I think they said Mede in the audiobook. Okay. It looks like Mede, but it says the guy. Okay. Mede it is. And told him that she was placed in Minister Har Harem's. Yeah. I'm just going to call him Harem. It's just Hiram? It's H I E R. -E -M. Yeah, I know it's Hiram, but I'm probably gonna say Harem, and you're just office no, ten years before. She then convinced Colin to help it's her been find ten out years. what the minister is doing, and Hiram was the one who had ordered an ambush on Atrobus, and she helped in that ambush. Ladies, choosing the but she's like secret, super secret, undercover. Yeah, I don't know who she works for, to be honest. She says she I'm, works for the Emperor, but she's really doing stuff But she had, like, a secret Hiram. code word for the Emperor. Like, yeah. She's, like, double agenting everybody, it yeah. feels like. I don't know who she works for. I don't know what she's oh. about. I don't care I about we, her. We didn't really until get that Until the later. end of the book, and then I was like, yeah, best character. <laughs> Are we on two? I'm on two. Mir Glam, uh, he smelled blood. And one of uh, J Jowson has been thrown into the sump and died. It's one of the scraws, which is the people that he works with in the swamp. <laughs> in the swamp. In and the so swamp. this, is there the ske skewers? What are they called? Scraws. Scraws? Scraw. <laughs> um, they have to go underwater to harvest things, but they can't breathe underwater, so they take these vapors that end up killing them awfully. And so that is, that'll be Glim's crusade. Yeah, because Glim is Argonian, so he can breathe underwater. So he's actually like that's his, the his best boy. Scraw. Yeah, he's in charge of the Squaw resistance. Um, he begins to train a new Scraw, Olaf. Olaf. There's a couple of them, and I didn't really learn their names. Uh, they want to know what the plan is, but Glim doesn't have a plan. Um, th so this is again uh, all began as worms, however, and beneath. The appearances, they were all umbrellians. So when you are born in the sump as an adult, but a different species, it doesn't matter because you li could live a different life and as different species. It just depends on what like genetic information they're picking up from the towns below, right? That's how they pick up different genetic Yeah, markers. but like he's starting to see the worms take shape of an Argonian and that kind of freaks him out a little bit. So that's also it tells you where they're at in their floating yeah. land. They're like, oh, well, we're close to home now because these things look familiar. Both the food that they get and then the types of creatures that are being born as adults. 
Just like a magnet city, just sucks everything up. Yep. Um, Anna Egg is still doing cooking stuff with that one lady who tried to kill her in the last book, which is what I wrote, which is yeah. Slayer. Um, so Glim has a fan club, and they call themselves the Glimmers, and they're the, his, adorable. His uh, posse. You know who's a part of the Glimmers? This one right here, Elise. I'm I'm, I'm a, Team she's Glim. A big Glim fan. Yeah. Uh, the plan it then becomes to inconvenience the lords, and so they're going to muck up all the stuff so that their kitchen smell. Uh, they're going to use it as cover, uh, leverage so that the scrawls don't have to breathe in the vapors. That kills them. So they're trying to be like, we're important. So they're going on kind of like strike, but they're sabotaging things. Mm, yeah. I'm really sorry I tried to kill you. Sly says to the Sly. Slear. Slear. S L Y R slur, it's slur. They said slur in the audiobook, okay. but it sounds like slur. <laughs> okay. Slur says to Anna. So now they're both working in the same kitchen again, and Anna is teaching her how to take emotion mm-hmm. out of brains. She's harvesting fear to put in food, and then we got another poop story. Oh, I skipped it. I just went straight to. Glim and Anae meet to discuss their current status. Oh, it's because <laughs> as she eats the thing with fear, she poops herself. Oh, she poops herself? Yeah. <laughs> I thought she was just like seizuring on the floor. Yeah, and she poops herself. Uh, yeah, so anyway, Glim and Anae meet up to discuss their current status, why they cannot leave Umbral, whether Atropus is alive, the Scraw Rebellion, all that stuff. Um, and this is where Glim asks Anae to make him a substitute for the Vapors. She reminds him that they might need to die to stop Umbral, and Mir Glim nods, and Anaeg and, and Glim are not sure they're on each other's side anymore. They, they tried to leave Umbral in the last book, and they found out that they were on Umbral for too long, so if they leave, then they're going to disappear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're beginning to separate in their friendship and their... They have different ideals here. Yes. Um Glim wants, it actually likes the people he works with. He's like, we have to help these people. And, and Anaik's just like, I want to get out of we're here. We're going to burn this whole motherfucker I down. I hate everything and everyone's trying to kill me. And Glim's like. I feel like she kind of likes it though because she's she does good later. at what she does. And later she... in the book she thinks about it, but yeah. she never actually wants to stay. No. She just thought about it once. She's like, actually I'm doing pretty good here. But she still. She's climbing that she's corporate still... ladder. Follows through and tries to kill the place. Yeah. So because I thought that that was going to be a problem. Uh, three. Colin again. He was. So I started like all my notes for each chapter with like who it was about. I think that's how we did it last time. Colin here. Guess where I'm from? Uh, he was taken off of the Atrebus case, and he's trying to find a connection between Thalmor and the Flying City. There isn't any. That's the secret. Mm-hmm. It's such a waste of time. Yeah, and he kind of figures that out pretty early. He's like, I'm gonna go in a different direction. But not tell anyone. Uh, the army of the Walking Dead need to remain near its creator. So the Walking Dead wormies are uh, going ahead of the Flying City, taking out towns. Colin asked permission to investigate Black Marsh, which um, I think Umbral is like at right now. <laughs> Yes. Which is where the Argonians are, so it makes sense. Follows the timeline. So he thinks that there was a plan hatched in Black Marsh that called the city there, and that's why it's starting over there. He's trying to find out who Yeah, was. so he's going through records, and he finds out that they've been censored in, Hi- in Hiram, Hiram's office. So he reports this back to Latence, sorry. Whatever her name is, <laughs> who tells him that Hiram has taken a second trip, to, or a secret trip, not a second trip, we only know once, a secret trip to Black Marsh. He went with Redacted. Delia, whatever, who is now dead. So Colin's like, I'm going to go to Delia's place and see what her ghost knows. <laughs> because we can talk to ghosts in this world. Yes. So um, there's no crime that we can't solve. So Hiram wants Umbrella to attack the Imperial City. And I wrote, like, who is he again? Because they didn't do a good job at recapping. For Hiram? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He's just the, some bad guy. But then you get it later on because you hear his uh, evil villain speech like four times. What a second rate villain. Yeah. Um, in chapter four, we're back in Anaig and she's talking with. She's toxin. She's toxin. She's toxin with that chef. <laughs> with Toll. Toll. Uh, the guy who killed her entire kitchen team in the last book. 
It was like the weird quote that I wrote, like you invent marvelous things. I hope to reach you at last. Like you hope to match her. He wants her, to or... bang her. That's the secret. Yeah, I was like, what is happening? He wants to have he sex. He definitely with her. like tries to kiss her, does kiss her, and she's like, uh, I don't know about this. Um, there. Then we find out that Chop Top Chef is having a competition. There will be a banquet. Uh, four kitchens have been invited to present a tasting for Lord Rel. Yeah, Rel. Which is uh, Umbriel's steward, and they are Toll, Femir, Luniels, and Astra. Not sure if I'm pronouncing any of those right. Um, um and in order to win, uh, Toll is like Femir has an upper hand because they have a secret ninth uh, saber. Yeah. So we need you to find out what that is, Anna Geek, since you're such a clever little experimenter. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is freaking out and has no idea how to do this. She decides that she needs to steal it from Fmir's kitchen. Mm -hmm. So she sends Glim a note asking to help with that. In a secret language. Uh, Glim asks Fena? Is that how you say yeah. her name? Fena. Fena, who she is in the trees and she helps gather materials and, and she's stuff just for like... the kitchens. Dark elf in the trees. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he asks her about the trees. Um, the, she says the trees make nuts, fruit, grain, salt, sugar, wine, vinegar. Um, they have a talent for making things. They just have to be told how. So all of these ingredients that we're getting in this kitchen, I thought they were like mining from the places down below. But no, the trees like they like upload the code and the yeah, trees make them. The code. I don't know. And the trees talk. But only if you're a part of them. And so he tells her about the hist of the Black Marsh. And because uh, the hist can kind of talk to the Argonians, so yeah. he's like, Oh, I get it, it's kind of like my thing. So he's like, Wait, 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 are these hist trees? Which I think they kind of are. They're because he yeah. thinks they're a rogue history, which does happen sometimes. Uh, the histories can, are not interconnected and they go rogue. So, and I put a lone tree helped Umbriel cross over. Yeah, pretty much. Hi, Colin is at Delia Herrick's apartment. And it's, there's traps. Most traps are simple. Her ghost, ghost is there, but it's not a ghost. It's a ghost. But it is a ghost. It's a ghost. Uh, just a trap for him. He fights the not ghost with a sword. And uh, she directs him to her hidden journal. Because so there is a ghost. And he reads it. The entry describes how Harem has performed some sort of ritual with the with an exil at the Limith City Tree and involved the magic word Umbriel, Colin decides to wait for his girlfriend. Uh, he goes to her place, he's like <laughs> checking out her house from the rooftops, and then he's like, "Uh oh, people be sneaking around." Yeah, there's Dark Brotherhood. I'm gonna save the day. There's Dark Brotherhood waiting for her, and uh, he attacks them. They attack him. Mm -hmm. They're she fighting. She has a Daedra. She comes home, sees this happening. She summons a Daedra to kill one of them. They're both hurt. But not hurt enough to not bang. They make bow, love. Bow, bow. And uh, he's like, we gotta get out of this line of work. And he's like, no, I have to do the right thing. Okay, also, are there dead Darth Brotherhood people on the floor while they make love on the carpet? Pa, yeah. That's that super gross. <laughs> they talk about how it's like it hurts because they're they're bleeding and they're getting each other's sweat all yeah. in their mm -hmm. their pores and, and wounds. It's so gross. Anyway, chapter seven. Yes, chapter six. <laughs> uh, I'd put am I supposed to know who Captain Falgar are is or Brennus? And then I was like, Oh You remember Brennus? I forgot <laughs> that's <laughs> so mean. I, I think I, it was a long time between I read the prologue and chapter six and I was like Who's Brennus? MVP Brennus. Second uh, best character. <laughs> Sar Saria? He's a red guard woman and she's in charge. I just have that uh, Mazgard, the orc mm -hmm. lady. Squad arrives in a mountain watch, a small town near Cyrodiil. And they search the houses and then tell them to evacuate. Order I'm them like, to evacuate. Why are they searching houses? If they want, they want their you. stuff. They will bring them to the larger city for better protection. On the way, Mazgar befriends a girl who is nicknamed Goblin because she has big ears. 
As the city draws near, the dead army catches up and they have to fight their way through to get the villagers to safety. They, like, take their horses, they take their stuff. The army's been, like, following the city and trying to, like, evacuate everyone in its path. But, you know, they're, they're tired and thirsty. And then they have a conversation about kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot this. Actually, gets brought up at the end of the book. Yeah. He's like, don't you want kids? Hang out with one kid and that makes you ready to have your own. I was like, what a weird conversation. It's it's a weird thing. I thought that they were going to be like a... Death. I thought they were going to be like a couple, uh, they but are... then they like, totally are not near the end. Yeah. They're just like friends. So uh, They are attacked by the Wormies as they head to a city I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce. What is it? Ch- Ch- Chedenhall? <laughs> oh no, it's Chadenhall. Chadenhall. Uh, people people look at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> in the city... Uh, when they die. So so they're like locked up in the city and then when you have a heart attack, right, or you're old and so this is stressful, then you yeah. die. <laughs> you turn into you, a yeah, anyway. So they're getting attacked from the outside and the inside. Yeah. They're like, no one die. <laughs> no one die. Stop dying. Everyone's not having heart attacks. This is that stressful. Calm down. Deep breaths. Don't die. <laughs> An umbrella is coming. Um yeah, corpse rides in town. From the temple to wait, from the steeple of the temple of RK, they spot Umbriel in the distance heading towards them. Chapter seven. They're here. Back to Anig and Glenn. They're gonna talk about some trees. And uh Anaig sounds like a jealous girlfriend. Why have you not mentioned her before? Oh, she kinda is. Anaig is very jealous. Mm-hmm. Joe, you be hanging out with my guy. <laughs> so he's talking about the girl that was in the trees, and she's like, What? Yeah, because Glim is talks about how the trees are his like, and Anaïg's like, let's just destroy. Yeah, them. we're gonna kill him. Um, Which Mir Glim doesn't like. She doesn't care about anything or anyone on this death trap. But Glim has made friends, and so yeah, he's Glim like, made friends. my friends. Then the topic turns to Anaïg's plans to steal from Fmir's kitchen. <laughs> so she wants Glim to sneak her in and then she's gonna wear like an invisibility potion yeah. to like get a little further in so she can find out what and, that night. And Glim for some reason knows that at least twenty others have tried and have been killed. Yeah. I guess because I don't know how I don't know how he would know that. He's they like deliver stuff from the sump, don't they? So to the kitchen. Well he knows about the dead bodies, but how would he know they Well because the they kitchen? put the dead bodies in the sump. Yeah, I know that. He knows that there's guess... dead bodies there, but how would he be like, mm, this one looks like it invaded the kitchen? <laughs> well, it's probably dead bodies from her kitchen, like Oh, it came they, in through the kitchen too. Yeah, they got like a garbage dump. They How would you know that it's because they invaded though, and not just because they killed them because they don't like them? Because it's you know it's yeah. it's tough here on Chopped. <laughs> <laughs> then it goes where Femmer just shows up in Toll's kitchen. Like Anai goes back and and Toll's like, I have someone here to see you. Yeah, so Anai's like, I'm gonna do it anyway. Yeah. Next day, she's summoned to Toll's quarters where Femmer is waiting. Femmer accuses her of stealing from the kitchen and. Okay, Sleer told them that Anaïg stole from the kitchen. Yeah, but this lady is dumb because she's wearing Anaïg's clothes. <laughs> so, like, this little goblin creature that also works in the kitchen yeah. is what it seems like. He woke like, up Anaïg and... Yeah. And is like, so you want me to give Sleer, like, your really nice dress? And she's like, yeah, she can have it. And then the lady wore it. Yeah, cause she's dumb. I guess. Because they stay in the same room because they're, like, tied to each other. Like, she's, like, Anaïg's servant. Kind of. She was, like, Anaïg's friend yeah. who then tried to kill her. And then I guess it's still friend. It's... Yeah. But now they switched. told, like, she's your problem. Yeah. And so they, like, stay in the same room together. And so she's wearing Anaïg's clothing. And then they go out and she's like, oh, wasn't me. Yeah, Anaïg denies. Fear. Fmir releases a creature that identifies the scent of her kitchen on the dress that Sleer is wearing, who is, she's borrowing it from Anaïg, and a vial containing the ninth saber. Which, which she was is to nothing. It is the absence <laughs> of flavor. She's like, well, I figured it out. Fmir takes Sleer away and Toll asks Anaïg how she done it because <laughs> Toll knows. Mm-hmm. Um, and she reveals that she had gone far enough into Fmir's kitchen that night to taint the dress with the stank of that mm-hmm. kitchen. But then she had reinvented the ninth flavor, the lack of taste, on She's her like, own. I figured it out. Amazing. But yeah, Sleer's like... She just like, wanted Sleer out of the way. She got brought back because they're going to kill her or torture her or whatever. And she's like, no, you have to take us both. And they're like, nope, she wasn't in the kitchen. 
So, so Sleer's gone forever. Goodbye, they, like, Sleer. kill each other, but there are, like, strict rules on what they can and cannot do. The kitchen's a weird place. Yeah. Uh, and then Anaik says, I do things in my own time for my own reasons. She has to say it, like, three times. Yeah, because, like, they kiss, uh, yeah. Toll and Anaik, which is weird. And he Tol's gets really like, hot over this, like, ooh. Ooh, you did that. Treachery. So hot. Toll says yeah. that he loves her and wants to bang her, which is super gross. Because yeah. when I think of Toll, I, when I think of any of these umbrillions. think of, like, a toad is what I was. I'm thinking of, like, very stretchy or squatty, like, Alice in Wonderland looking yeah. proportions. Like, they got big heads. For Toll, I imagine them being, like, like stretchy I but, but it's I imagine him really? being short with like a giant head, like the um Howl's Moving Castle lady. Yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. I because they're not really descriptive. I mean, I'm just basing it off of how the guy voices them too. Okay. I think he gave him like a very like you were like ratatouille, snaky voice, <laughs> ratatouille villain. <laughs> well, like the the critic or the short guy. The critic. <laughs> yeah, but like taller, like mm-hmm. hella tall, like lanky. Because he gave him like a snaky voice, so I was like, oh, he's like a really tall, like snaky looking dude with long fingernails or something. Ooh, gross. Yeah, they don't sound appealing. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Oh, it's Colin. Colin again. It's Colin. He's gonna tell his special lady friend with two names about the journal. Her name's her last name's Arif. Two names. Um, she has a Arif. <laughs> <Arif. laughs> I know it's Arif. Uh, she has a secret word for the empire emperor. It's like her safe word, but it's Jasper. Yep. I was like, we're not gonna get any backstory of why it's Jasper. Nope. Okay. Maybe it's something we just don't understand. Uh, he meets the emperor and he whispers the word. The and emperor's like, "How'd you know my secret word?" The, he's and he like, gives him... "Yeah, Hiram's up to something." But really, at this point, it's uh, Arisa's word against Hir- Hiram, and Hiram's like his second in command, right? Yeah, but, like, the Emperor's already kind of suspicious of him anyway. Yeah. So he, he gives him the, the Journal of the Dead Girl, and he's like, okay, you can go find more substantial evidence yeah, against evidence. him, and then I will consider doing something. But for now, uh, I can't really do anything. Uh, so he gives him a key to Hiram's room and uh, and told him that they were... wait. Oh, he tells him that, like, a zombie came and yeah. delivered them a letter. <laughs> Got a letter. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I wanted to let you know. The the, yeah, it's an unreal kind of letter. Gave him a letter. <laughs> uh, he says it wants the city, but not its inhabitants, so the city could evacuate. That's they nice. The city. <laughs> Very polite of yeah. the zombies. They don't trust, of course, because it's surrounded by wormy dead people, mm-hmm. which I feel like they need a different word because the worm, they had worms for the people on. Oh, yeah. But they like barely Umbrail, talk about the and then wormies. Wormies for the dead is so people. funny. It takes the tension out of any situation. Yeah. It's the wormies. Well, and like a lot of this has to do with Norse culture, and in Norse culture, worms were dragons. Uh, only if you're talking about the Nords, which we are not talking about. Yeah. They're in a little section of this, but yeah. they are unimportant. <laughs> Chapter nine. Anaik tries to call Atrobus, but he didn't answer, so she decides that her best chance to survive is to escape Toll on her own by moving up in Umbriel. Gotta cook the perfect meal. And that the best opportunity to do so was the upcoming banquet. Alright, this is where I start hating on Anig. Um, So she's coming again to Glim to ask for more help, but she has not delivered any potions for him. Uh, she meets with Glim. Glim points out that he's been helping her... And that she hasn't repaid the favor, and she helps come up with a plan that will make it look like the kitchens are sabotaging each other. Yeah, because he asks for weapons, and she's like, oh, let's just uh, make it look like we're sabotaging each other. Well, how is she going to get weapons? Um, I don't know. Exactly. She's got cooking instruments, though. they got knives and stuff. She's just going to take them out of the kitchen? They're going to freaking know. Mm. But at least make some, like, small potions. That's all he's asking for. Um, how, she's just using it. She doesn't know how to do the vapor thing. She can make, she's made it before. She has? Yeah, she made it in the first book, which is like, oh, they really need this. And she's like, well, I could make large vats of it in my own kitchen, which she still doesn't do later in the book. Um, she says he had lost all sense of things. So they're starting to. Well, it's because they have it. different goals now. Yeah. Um, sabotage is going great, but Anaig. I love it when friends fight. <laughs> uh, is more concerned with her menu than helping them. Well, that's because that's what her goal is. Mm-hmm. 
Her plan is to get out of Toll's kitchen because Toll's creeping her out. But Toll even asks her to invent underwater breathing stuff. When was that? When was, was that? In this chapter. Okay, let me look at my notes. Uh, I don't see it. I'm gonna find it. Do it. Uh, so he's smelling something. It's felt uh, a vapor essence of fermented duck eggs. She gives it a try. Is this to. when he gets mad? It's the water filters. Slum yeah. slurry has them clogged. I know what it is. Do not presume. That's like later though. It's on page one sixteen. Because that's when he's like. I can't believe sabotage is happening where we never sabotage each other. Uh, this sort of contest happens all the time where all of us rivals, but never before has this sort of wholesale sabotage occurred. Now they strike wait, wait, us wait. and we strike again. Uh, yeah, he's like... Oh, wow, that did happen in it chapter escalated. 9. I thought that was way later. No. Okay, so yeah, she's like, you guys to sabotage the rest of the kitchens and then the uh, the scraws actually do that and they sabotage every kitchen, including hers. Yeah. To make it look like, uh, you know, some other team's do it and, and Toll gets pretty pissed um there's this whole thing about glim and, and finna riding some branches and F- fina's not worried about dying or and whatever she, she tells him of the mass suicide that happens on umbrella people just like fall off the trees on purpose because yeah. she's like yeah I, I caught someone and then they went back the next day and did it again and so they could be reborn i'm assuming or maybe they don't want to be here anymore yeah, like, you just have to constantly be reborn though uh, Glenn uh, is worried that all the squirrels will die before the potion is there, so he starts killing uh, the reborn. Yeah, he realizes still. that his attempt to help the squirrels will not result in a better life for the existing squirrels, but instead results in umbriel producing Argonian-like squirrels that can breathe underwater while the existing ones die off. So he kills the growing Argonian-type uh, things in the swamp. <laughs> Implantations is what they call them. Toll decides that he has had enough of this kitchen being sabotaged and brings Anai there, and he ends up getting in a fight with the Scraws. So he goes down there. Mm-hmm. Well, Wirt gets caught and says that it was only him. So Wirt is one of the Scraws. Yeah. Um, Probably the most important one after Glim. Yeah, and then uh, the guards are gonna kill him. So Glim kills all most of the guards. And then he ends up going after Toll because Toll is there. But something happens to his arm. He's like, I don't get it. Because Toll's got, has Toll got a secret slicing thing too? I don't know. All I have. He's got like some special ability. His arm's like super hurt and can't, he can't do anything with it. Is that Glim is going to get killed by Toll, but not before Anai kills Toll. She's got a secret. An invisible blade. Yeah, a blade that's like she can throw out and comes back. It's like tied to her wrist, right? Yeah. She got from the previous kitchen. Uh, they are going to try to make it look like Toll invaded Femmer's kitchen. Femmer's kitchen. All right, we're on part two of three. Hmm. And we're on, do we want to go chapter one on part two, or do you want to continue? With... Well, I have it continued, so. Okay. I mean, you could do part one, chapter I both. ten. So, yeah. So we're on now chapter ten, or one of part two. Lord... Ariel, just put Ariel. Ariel shows up dressed in smoke. He is the patron of the Toll Kitchen and asks the kitchen whether they could still win this banquet competition. And his skin is like translucent. I don't of? know. I don't know. Doesn't it, matter. He's so unimportant. Yeah, it's just so they're just describing the lords. Uh, Toll is dead, and in the Vakter into. Bar is the second in command. Doesn't think that they can win, but Anai is like, oh, yeah, we can. We've already prepared this meal. Yeah. We're in it to win it. And Earl's like, you're putting your life on the line to do that. And even the other chef, y- Yurim, mm-hmm. was one of the chef's tolls to underchef, offered to underchef for Anai because Yurim's like, I don't think we can do it, chef. And he's like, yeah, chef. Yeah, chef. We can do this, chef. Yeah. And then he's <laughs> like, well, you know how to make creations, but you don't know how to be a chef. So you are not a dick. So you need me to be well, mean. Yeah, to you need me to, to tell people what to do because you work alone and do everything on your own. You're the one person in the group project who's doing all the work. And we need to, if we're going to finish this banquet thing by like soon, yeah. then we need people working on it. Um, dinner sounds gross, but is served. Oh, Yiram asks if she killed Toll. 
And she lied to Sydney. Like, what? No. She's like, I would be, I would not. Why would I still be here? I'd be pretty uh, happy if you did it. And she's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't trust anyone. Um, so they serve dinner. She finally goes to bed. They haven't heard anything. And Lord Rell is creepily at her bed. Yeah. He's like, how'd you do it? How? That's amazing. Your food was <laughs> incredible. How did you make that? She made people, like, vomit. Yeah, she's but like, it was I love people that. that he didn't like, so he enjoyed it quite quite a bit. Uh, they won. They won, and she has to cook a meal for Umbriel in three days. Yep. Chapter eleven. Uh, guards are coming for Glem. They harpoon him. Uh, Uten rescues him and tells him to go. Uh, while he fights off the guards, and we find out that he broke the tree root feed. Yeah, so the That's other they... glimmers broke it, and then they made, they put, like, a mark on it a to signature. show that they did it. Uh, so that's why they're getting attacked right now. And, yeah, so Glim is hurt. But, um, mm-hmm. uh, o- Othan, like, sacrifices himself. Well. Yeah. And so Glim is swimming away. Sad. Chapter 12. Now we're dead, Rose and Sewell. Oh, I forgot about them. Oh, it's been a long time. It's they part two is when they show back yeah. up again. Solstheim? Solstheim? Okay. And they're in the snow naked. And they but he did send their smelly broken gear with them, so they have to put that on. They talk about Solstheim and the refugees in Morrowind after the red year. And it was a haven for the dark elves. Sol assumes that most of his people have settled in the south of the island, and then Anae contacts Atribus through Ku. And he tells her of his and Sol's experiences of what they've learned about Umbral. Vuhan is Umbral. Yep, Vuhan is Umbral and was a Dunmer at one time, which is Dark Elf. And he is surrounded by or is there in a bubble. And they are flirty. Kind sort of. of. It was weird. Atropus wants to go to Clavicus Vile. Uh, Sewell will not have it. And walks off and Atropus just follows him. Yeah, he gives him an out. He's like, you can go back to the Imperial City. Because he's like, we're getting farther away. Um, instead of looking for the sword, Atropus just follows him. Chapter 13. The Umbriel dinner has happened. Magically. So it's been three days. Uh, she still wants to poison the trees. That's at Anaik. Mm-hmm. And she says, and maybe as Umbriel died, she and Glim might find a way off of it. Maybe. But if not, such was life. Okay. Everything died. So she's in her emo phase. Yeah, she's being pretty nihilistic about it being here. <laughs> uh, then she's lifted into a spiral by three people in gray and she meets Lord Umbriel. Oh, yeah. Two people just show up and, like, fly her up to Lord Umbriel, mm. who is like, how did you know that I I love Morrowind food? You, there's no way that you knew I was a dark elf. <laughs> like, how did you know that? Inside knowledge. And she's like, like I, well, I just saw these things coming up, and it reminded me of home. I was like, I don't know. I saw, like, these these marshmallow thingies, and I was like, this works well with this. And <laughs> so, yeah, she just kind of knew Morrowind dishes and ingredients. And then orders her to kill Mir Glim mm. for the trouble he's caused by making some sort of potion that would only affect him. And Aig agrees and yeah. begins making a poison. I'm like, she better not. This is like, Ugh. ooh. And asking you to kill him. Because she claims him as a friend. He's like, do you know this Argonian? And she's like, yeah, he's my friend. He's yeah. like, you're different. I'm like, oh, she better not. All right, now we're in chapter 14. After this, back again. You see a castle, and that's Sathil? Sathil? Yeah, sure, Sathil. <laughs> uh, Atribus pretends to be a naturalist, and he's like, yeah, I'm marking down all of these beasts. What's that beast over there? They totally don't believe him, but <laughs> they follow through anyway. Look at those horkers. <laughs> I'm just here to look at the horkers. And the freaking Nord is like, what? Horkers? Oh, horkers? Do you want to look what? at our horkers? And he's like, Yeah, I want to look at I want to look at your horkers. And he's like, The horkers? Show them your horkers. Are you sure? And he's like, Yeah. Do, do you, we don't have them in Imperial City. He's like, You don't have the horkers? I'm like, Oh my god. <laughs> I remember listening to this. Did they do the like the Norwegian like? You yeah, they did, horkers? and it sounded like he was shouting like it was a Monty Python <laughs> skit or something. Um, this is also where we find out that the sword can change shape. It could be anywhere and anything, and they don't know what it looks like. It's a Daedric artifact thingy. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. 
Um, they have not seen the Lord. So they got brought to the castle and they got the room and um, they have not seen the Lord of the Manor. Things are kind of weird. Um, Things are weird there. Atribus is like having trouble sleeping. So he decides to get out and wander around. And as he does, he felt breath on his face. Let's see another chapter. Yeah, okay. Chapter 15. It's freaking Colin again. <laughs> Your least favorite character. I hate him. <laughs> Colin is... Uh, Every time I see his name in my notes, my stomach drops because we have to talk about Colin. Colin. All right. Again? Colin de Anvil. <laughs> <laughs> so he's looking for something he doesn't know uh, in the tomes. Um, he's looking to find information on his ghost encounter because he's like, it was a ghost, but it wasn't a ghost. Yeah. That's the library of the Pinatus Oculatus. Ornil speaks to the librarian, Professor Ornil. Tells him he's looking for a specific type of Daedra, but guess what? The book that it's in was checked out by oh, oh, no way special by Hiram, but they by have Hiram. like a special spell to tell you who checked the book out last instead of like the like checkout thing in the library. Instead of book. wasting paper, <laughs> they could just tell. And then Colin is hiding his girlfriend in the tunnels under the city. Oh yeah, because she's um because people are trying to kill her. Yeah, people are trying like, to kill Do her. Don't really have to be. Here? There's a hidden layer of an old necromancer called the King of Worms, which is uh Mandy Marco, which is in like two to three el- four Elder Scrolls games. Mm. There's just this necromancer that is called the King of Worms, and Wormies. and and he always dies. Yeah, Wormies, and he always dies, and then another one takes his place. So then it becomes the new King of Worms. It's like the Dread new King Pirate of Worms. Robin. Yeah. Manny Marco. Under the ministry is uh, where this is. Yeah, and so Colin leaves her there because he's going to go to Hiram's office to find proof. Why would you say it like that? Because that's what he needs. Proof. 16? Uh, oh, I was going to say... Um, Aris. Aris is like, hey, the emperor is uh, sending you up to take the fall. You know this, right? And Colin's like, yeah, probably. probably. Um, She's like, you're not going to be able to find proof, and then you're going to look like an idiot. So yeah, then he enters. But he, 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 she says that the emperor wants him to kill Hiram. Yeah, he's either gonna take the fall for a bunch of stuff, or he's gonna kill Hiram. He's so. like, whatever. So it's win win for the emperor. Yeah, he's like, well, we'll f- cross that bridge and we'll get there. All right, now yeah. we're in sixteen. Yeah, now back to Atribus. So okay. the breath that was on his face is uh, from a fan girl that's creeping around outside his room in the dark. Orinja. Is, is a serving that? maid. I don't know. That's I think that's how they said it. What did you what would you say? Ar Arinja? Ar- I don't know. Arinja. I R I N J A. Yeah. A and serving maid that has been seen in the kitchen manner. She's like, I know who you are. I read all your stories. No one else reads here. No one else can read here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, of course he tells her everything. And then Sul tells him to keep it in his pants. Yeah, she Warns him not to talk about the sword because he's like, We're actually here to get the sword. Umbra. Oh, God, Umbriel and Umbra. I yeah, hate this. Then... He's like, I'm trying to get Umbra. And she's like, Okay, don't talk about that here. That's secret. Um, and then she There's leaves. something really weird going on. <laughs> Sul questions whether that was a wise choice because Sul is like, You're thinking with your penis again. Huh? Give it your pants, pants. man. I see every time there's a pretty girl, you just spill your guts, huh? Mm. All right. It's a Lancelot effect. Chapter 17. Yeah, uh, there's something weird going on with South... I'm gonna call him South Hill. But, uh, she, she's not gonna talk about it. 17. Glim. He Glim. goes to the trees. <laughs> uh, remember Glim was injured by a harpoon. And oh, yeah. Fem, Fen, Fena is there, and she takes care of him, and he passes out for three days. Part of that's because he's hurt. Part of that's because she drugged him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she he wanted to leave, so there's people looking for him, but she hit him. She begs him to stay, uh, but the Scraws. Yeah, his his he fan group, the Glimmers, are going crazy They're without him and shit breaking all over the place. stuff. Uh, Glim is gonna try to send them a message. I don't know how, telling them to calm the fuck down. Uh, so yeah, Fen- Fena goes, but she's like, "I'll go if you stay here. I'll talk to them." And so he stays one more night. He eventually decides, though, that it's time to return to the swamp. And he gets return in the water, and he's like, oh, back in the water, it feels so good until it doesn't. 
pain ends up radiating up from his arm mm-hmm. into his body, then his heart stops. Yeah, they lose consciousness. No, nope, no, nah, she did it. She did. I know. You're like, oh no, she actually did it. Ooh. What a bitch. Eighteen. But she didn't really. She had a plan. She killed him. Yeah, but then she like rebirthed him. <laughs> Uh, 18. Atribus and Sol are taken into the mountains because, you know, they're naturalists. <laughs> yeah, they're naturalists. So, like, some Nord named Fruth is walking them around, showing them around the region, and suddenly avalanche. Uh, but it's not an avalanche. It's just a high-pressure wind system that will freeze your body in seconds. It, they separate Atribus and Fruth from Sul, who is joined by Lord Sathil, who is the lord of the, the Nord Inn that they're staying in, where Umbral, um, Umbra, Umbra, the Umbra sword, is the, the sword. sword. The sword is. Um, Sewell knows that the sword's there, he just can't find it yet. Uh, and they call this a frost giant, but really it's Sathil. He's got magical powers. The Nords, you know, and their frost magic. Yeah. And um, he's like, who sent you? It was him. And, like, they never say who it was. So he's like, no. He's, uh, so a lot of people, I guess, have been sent to him, and he's killed a lot. He's killed all of them. And people really want that sword, I guess. Because they definitely have confessed, and so he's like, yeah, you're not the first. Uh, and, uh, he's, Sewell's he's, like, no, it wasn't him. He's <laughs> able to detect Malakath on Sewell, but Wrong guy. not whatever the prince he's thinking about, mm-hmm. which I don't know. So he promises to leave Sewell and Atropis alone after the avalanche ends atribus takes a hot bath in the manor oh, and drinks some whiskey yeah and he and Sewell talk about what happened with lord sethil and they're wondering if malakath is actually clavicus vile i don't know if that ever gets like actually true like when they were talking to yeah. malakath in malakath's realm and they were like what if that was clavicus vile just like fucking with us and they're like well maybe and i don't we, we never find that i don't think out. we ever find that out no, because when they, you do introduce Vile, and it's someone completely different. He's Vile. not like, ah, it's me again. Yeah, no, he's, he's like very Alice in Wonderland, goofy, yeah. like. Weird. Very dark. But, uh, so, and then Sewell goes to bed, uh, Atribus is still defrosting. <laughs> um, and then, of course, Fangirl comes in, and he has a heart-to-heart with her, and then he has a mouth-to-mouth with her. It's, it's like he is out of the bath like naked with a towel and she walks in and is like oh is this a bad time and she he's like no come on in and she's like oh i hope you're not like i'm that kind of girlfriend and he's like have some whiskey because i am like, oh, <laughs> i never do this they drink together atibus cries about his dad and she tells and he's like him, not into her no he's not which is he just wants someone right. to talk to he wants yeah. a fangirl uh she tells him that lord sathel's son ithul Elthul. Elhul. Elhul is in possession of the sword, and he is possessed. It turned him crazy. By the sword. He's been locked away and hidden for eight years. Because he's been, he killed a bunch of people, yeah. We'll find out more about him a little bit. Okay, okay. So the the fangirl and Atribus, they bang. But the whole. Flesh melting in The flesh. whole time he was thinking about Anaig. So he uh, was like, I don't want to bang because I, I kind of have feelings for Anaig. But, but I've like, only seen her yeah, from the shoulders oh up. God. And what if she's what idiot? If she's super <laughs> ugly down <laughs> below. You mean fat. After, you are saying, what after if she's this fat? Zoom call? Like, what if. The and so. <laughs> the Zoom call? Like, I only see them. Yeah, but it's the coup call. Uh, the coup call? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he feels bad immediately after for thinking that, but he still bangs this girl. Yeah. So we're like, God, Atribus. Yeah, Atribus. Anyway, this is... Flesh melting into flesh is how they describe the sex scene. But Honestly, not as bad as the Colin one. <laughs> I, out of all the sex scenes, ranking them, this one's a little bit better. Cool. All right, we're on 19. Uh, and Aig is looking at Glim's body, because he did. Yeah, when Lord Real brings Glim to her, and after Lord leaves, she removes a crystal but that has formed in Glim's mouth. Before he leaves, he tells her what they're going to do with the body. They're going to chop them up in little pieces. And they're going to put them in the Scraw's dormitories, so they have a little piece of him to remind them of what not to do. I'm like, that's disgusting. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, the crystal is formed from his tug, and then she puts it in his pocket, or she puts it in her pocket? In her pocket. It's a soul gem. Oh. She trapped his soul in a, a gem 
So that way he can still live. She just needs another body. Yeah, she just needs to make another body now. And then she's like, oh, I wonder what Atropos is up to. Let me open. Yeah, she's like, I'm sad that my first boyfriend died. She's like drinking a bottle of wine. Let me call my second boyfriend. Uh, And and he left his thing open. He left his thing open on like the bed. Was it the bed stand? And she sees this naked lady. Yeah, she sees this naked lady and becomes upset. And then she's mad at herself because she's like, why did I ever assume that he wanted to, like, bang me? Like, why did I ever assume that? She feels betrayed is what it says. Although they don't have, like, an understanding or relationship. They kind of have, they have feelings for each other. They do, but they never talk about it. Yeah. They're a terrible relationship, I think. Yeah. 20. Oh my gosh, freaking favorite. Colin. <laughs> uh, I Colin has a Daedra in a box. Uses an item called a soul maze to trap a Daedra that Harem has left in his room. He searches the room and finds some papers containing a diagram and the word Umbriel. So he copies them as best he can and brings them to his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, Latrine, which is... Latrine. Uh, <laughs> that's the name of Latrine, right? I know, but it's, it's not it's Latrine, too much like it's toilet. Latrine. Uh, so, well, her last name is Aris. Toilet ass. <laughs> His girlfriend, toilet ass. Uh, it says, she's like, oh, this looks, because there's a bunch of words on it. She's like, oh, those symbols look familiar. I can't read it, though. But it does look like a map. But she knows uh, someone. She's someone. like, I know someone, but I have to go outside the city. So keep checking back daily to see if I show up. <laughs> Come back in a couple of chapters, and I will oh, have like, these well, runes translated. You need, like, another way to, like, signal that you're back in the city versus having this kid who's obviously has feelings for her, like, have to check back into the dungeon every day to see if she's there or not. Yeah, but that's her plan. So now we're in 21, and we're back to the subplot I keep forgetting about. <laughs> because it like, happens so sparsely. Brennus and the Mazgar, so that was the orc and the mage. Yep. I'm like, who that? The oh, tale the... of the orc and the mage. Uh, they are being passed by the wormies, and they are gonna go south. But uh, they're followed by the dead. Um, they go into a fishing village and hide, and then Brennus uses his magical powers to like light them on fire, because she was gonna swing the axe, and he kind of beat her to it. Yeah. Uh, the pair discovers that they have been joined by a group of knights of the thorn. Which I was like, I had to look this up because I was like, this sounds familiar. They're in Oblivion, but they're just like two guys who you can join their order. They asked to like have you take them through an Oblivion gate, and I think both of them died in my playthrough, and I just kind of was like, I'm not going to reload that. <laughs> they're just dead. Um, but... <laughs> they are going to take them to the Imperial City, right? Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, you have to come. Oh, you guys were helping people out. Uh, evacuate civilians. Yeah, we're gonna need your help. So their leader offers extra mounts, and they go and rejoin the group from Chaden Hall on the Blue Road. Okay, twenty-two. Fan girl. Inertia. Inertia. <laughs> She's gonna lead attributes to where the attributes. Attributes. <laughs> A tire bus. And Sewell <laughs> down to where she... where the sun is the sun that is. was crazy with the sword because the he goes so he can't he won't let go of the sword but he just kills everyone with it yeah um, and he apparently screams and wallows yes. and he's been doing that for years and we've stopped feeding him so they locked him <laughs> under this under the city um, and it's where the stonework goes away to the living rocks I'm like that was an interesting description because I'm like does that just means that they built the castle into the mountain right. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, we find out he doesn't eat. He hasn't eaten in, like, seven years. <laughs> yeah, they just stopped feeding him. But then there's a bunch of dead, like, fresh dead people down there. I don't know what to tell you. Nords, man. <laughs> so Sewell tells Atrobus to keep it in his pants again. Um, and he's feeling bad about sleeping with her because he doesn't really care about her. But uh, he also cares a little bit about Anna Yeag. Yeah. Um, so she leaves, and he's like, why'd you let her leave? And he's like, oh, I felt bad. And then uh, Sewell goes down, and Narai? Yeah. Well, I didn't know who so the heck she is, was. This is Lord Sathil's wife. Daughter. Daughter. Because he said the she said the wife died. Okay. Because the son killed the wife. Okay. This is a daughter. I don't know. 
And she knows it's everything. someone related to the Lord guy. Yeah, so he's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, I know everything. Because guess what, sucker? I sent that fangirl to you to, to seduce you. Spend some time with you. And I know that you're looking for the sword. Locks the entrance of the prison, a cage door behind them, and reveals that she sent them to seduce Atribus. She says that all she wanted was for this to be over, for the sword to lo- no longer be in her brother's possession. So he just kills everything in sight. And so she's like, you better hurry. Um, because Sewell starts to shout. Um, El Ho looks like a skin skeleton like a black it's a black like skin the skeleton. sword is fused like to part his of his arm. arm which i'm like why don't you just cut his arm off at the shoulder and then use that as the you just kill this guy dude yeah i was like that's he's what i thought was gonna happen that they were gonna cut his arm off and then and then use the arm use the arm so they don't have to touch the sword. that's actually kind of a good idea I was like, why, why would although you how long it's does not... rigor mortis last the uh, whole time i'm not a mortician not all the time so. Yeah, I think I'd give up eventually and like go to the sword. <laughs> um, this was kind of confusing about what happened because they're like fighting, and then he says like take it from him, and then green goo starts coming okay, out so of his eyes. And he, mouth. They dissolve him into acid. But uh, who dissolved him into? School, cause he's a did sorcerer. he like? Oh, so it was a sorcery it's thing. A sorcery like, thing. Did you throw acid at him. Yeah. Like what is happening? Magic. Uh, then they have to triple wrap. The yeah, sword. they wrap the sword up, so they don't want to touch it. It came here. with a sheath, though, which was very nice. Uh, I wouldn't touch that sheath either. <laughs> um, but the daughter lady refuses to let them go unless they leave the sword here, because they want to take it with them, obviously. Because she's like, just put it down, and I'll unlock the door, and they're like, hmm, plant, how about you just let us out, and we'll take the sword with us. She's like, no. That sword's killed too many people. And, and so, like summons a daedra but he summons it on like the wrong side of well, the so door <laughs> the gate has like a spell thing where anything that you hit towards the door comes back to you tenfold mm. and so he couldn't put it on the other side of the door no it's protected. but he, he summons one and it scares her and she runs off and she's like i knew you were bad people he's like well wait, can we just leave the sword now and she's like no <laughs> take boxes atrobus suggests that sewell uses magic to teleport them to Clavicus Vile, and Sewell's like... Oh. Uh, we also have here, I have that Clavicus I Vile guess. had a sword made to send him souls, so we get, like, a little lore. Yeah, a lot of those uh, artifacts are used to collect souls. And then they get sucked somewhere else, uh, I said possibly to Vile? Yeah, they they've been, like, into Vile's uh, oblivion party? plane. I mean, he's no Shio Gorath, but... Mm. <laughs> Uh, 23, we have- Part three. Part three, finally. We have an artist dance party happening on Umbriel. Yeah, Lord Real invites Anaig to a party in his quarters where she can mingle with the other chefs, artisans, and other stuff. So he, she's like, oh, there's a lot of people here, not just chefs. And he's like, you think that uh, the only art we care about is food? What are you, uncultured we're, swine? We're cultured, how dare yeah. you? And she's not having a good time. So she leaves to go back to the kitchen. And then her, like, second chef's like, do you have fun? And she's like, you can go yeah, instead take of my me. place. This was terrible. Uh, then they tell her, hey, uh, someone tried to sneak in the kitchen, so... With a knife. You uh, know that cell that we have in the kitchen? We have, there's someone in it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, wait, there's a cell in the kitchen? And he's like, yeah, where do you think uh, Toll put the per- prisoners? And she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Surprise! Uh, anyway, it's, it's Fema. Fema with a knife. She was gonna kill Anaig for yeah. killing Glim. And then Anaig's like, come with me, I have to show you something. And she's got like a little sack growing Glim's new body. Yeah, Anaig reveals that the poison she made caused his body to grow a crystal similar to a soul gem that held his soul's thoughts and memories and that she was using it to grow a new Glim in her bath. Which would be fully formed in a few days. So, uh, she as soon as he wakes up, she's gonna kill the trees. Because she's gotta wait for him first so they can escape. escape. Yeah. 24. Atrobus and Sewell are summoned to a white field to follow a dog. Barnabas. There is a weird man sitting at the mm-hmm. table. He's got, like, a horn growing above one eye and a sore above the other. Did he, like, lose a horn? Or does he just gross? I don't remember. It's what like he a weird like. kid man. That's how they like describe it. I remember his statue 
Only kind of. Which they do get teleported to later, so. Yeah. Uh, we find out that this is Clavicus Vile. Clavicus Vile. And then we also find out that Umbra is part of Vile. Yeah, so that's why um, the Lord of Umbriel is, is Wuhan. <laughs> but he calls himself Umbriel, but it's actually Clavicus Vile's island place. Mm-hmm. So like that's part why... of his spirit that gives him extra power. Yeah, it was just a way for him to collect more souls, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, we gotta deal with freaking Clavicus Vile now. Vile's um, like, yeah, I'll help you out. I'll put you there, but uh, we need to make a deal. I want one of your souls. And the, and Atribus is like, no. <laughs> no. Uh, you have nothing to bargain for with us because you need your soul back. So if you want us to do something for you, no deal. But Atribus points out, yeah, that if Umbriel reaches the white gold tower, it seems Vile won't be able to get it back. So he didn't have a choice. He had to take the offer. And Clavicus is like, fine. So uh, they take the sword and they're going to send them to the Imperial City. They fall onto the ground and Sul and Atribus... Oh, so Sul gets like hit into the statue. Yeah, they he teleports them and Sul gets like head first yeah. into the statue. And so he's what a out dick. for count. Um, <laughs> Clavicus. And so the word of the day is twa- Travois. What? Travois is what Atribus makes. And I had to look this up to yeah, see what, what it was. That? So it's like, um, so it's two sticks that meet, cross at the top. And then in between where it's like a V, then you put like a bag or like a thing to carry. And this is what people used to, you t- would tie the top where the two sticks meet to like your horse or a dog. And it would like drag it along. Oh, interesting. Okay. So that's what he does with soul but he's the dog horse yeah he has to drag soul uh to and the a sword. boat at the shore and he begins rowing to the waterfront district of the imperial because the dead city. are coming yeah the dead are coming and the so, dead are coming <laughs> uh he's like oh crap and then he's like oh, we gotta make it to the city uh chapter 25 after this again. Yeah, it's still after this, which <laughs> it would really confuse me because normally it was like we switched between characters and this was a time where now it's still the characters yeah. in the next chapter. But we got to bring Anaig in here. So he's going to call her through Ku. Uh, something is wrong and she he finds out that she knew about his sexy time. Yeah, Anaig's still mad at him. Okay, so he's like, my life is hard also, Anaig. And I do, everything I do is for the cause, including having sexy time. She's like, for the cause. Barf. Yeah, and then it gets worse because then he turns it and he's like, you're so brave. And she's like, how do you know that? And he's like, because I listen to you. Oh my God, he's the you're worst. The bravest. I was like, that's when I put barf. Um, and then this was the funniest thing because so Atribus sucks at everything yeah right and like other people like do stuff for him to make him look better and so he's like rowing this boat but not really because the dead are carrying the boat yeah so the dead creatures <laughs> they're like they're grabbing the boat and, and they're like, pushing it to pushing shore. it <laughs> so he's not even good at rowing <laughs> no he can't do anything um yeah so there uh there's a red-headed person and he's Puts a bag over his head and he's gonna take him to the place. Yeah, he recognizes Atribus once they get to the waterfront. But wouldn't he know who this person was? He, you think Atribus would know that? Because he knows like of his name. That doesn't matter. Atribus is not gonna know who everyone is. But it's like he's a selfish prince character. Oh. Um, but they're not. He's not gonna take him to Umbriel. Uh, we find out it's Hiram. Why have we never gotten a description of this man before? I have no know. Um, and then we get his evil Maybe in the speech. last book we just missed it. Yeah, yeah so Hiram's going to tell us his evil plan. And he calls him, you sh- instead of being Atribus the Brave, you should be known as Atribus the Clever. Because, like, Atribus is starting to put things together, but he's, like, mocking him. Mm-hmm. And we find out that Hiram is the one that actually told the dad to be like, oh, yeah, pretend that he's a brave person. So it's all Hiram's evil doing. Um, Hiram informs Atribus that he will kill him after he learns how exactly Atribus is involved with Umbriel. Vuhan apparently wants both Atribus and Sol, which interests Hiram. Because he's, like, scared of him or, like, something. He's scared of something. Uh, um, so this is where I also find out that Vuhal is Umbriel. 
Hiram claims he has a lot to do and is going to try to frame Atrobus as a traitor and then leaves him in yeah. the jail cell. Sewell's also there. <laughs> He's still knocked out then. Yeah. So this is the cells that are in Hiram's rooms that uh, Colin saw when he went to investigate. And Hiram needs Blue Hall, but he doesn't trust him. So he's going to try to get a secret plan. 26. Back to Bren and Mazda. They're reunited with their other team. Goblins yeah. there. Some commanding officer ordered the refugees and Imperial soldiers to split into two groups. And Mazgar gets a promotion. She's supposed to take the civilians north. But the, also the funny thing is, is the civilians keep leaving. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we're going to go back to our old city. So they, they're like, good, because we don't have enough food to feed you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? So You're she... protecting them, but not. Uh, yeah. Like, I guess if you want to go, you can go. We're not going to kidnap you. Army politics. This commander orders Mazgar to t watch over General Takar's forces as they take on Umbriel's dead army and they send a messenger if Takar is successful. Uh, he is forced to order a retreat in the end, however. Yeah, so they're fighting Umbriel. So Umbriel's there and they're fighting all the dead army mm -hmm. underneath. And then they're like, oh, we're going to fly above. And then this whole fight lasts for four paragraphs, by the way. Mm -hmm. And then they get decimated. And then, of course... They fall to the ground, they die, and what happens to them? They get reborn. They get reborn. That's They're part of the dead army. So, uh, Mazgar wants to go help with the reinforcement at the Imperial City. This part was funny, because Brennis was like, uh, I'm a mage, you're my bodyguard. And she's like, but I want to go! I want to go fight the thing. He's like, I yeah, thought, we're going. <laughs> I definitely thought Brennis was going to pull the, like, I don't want my bodyguard to die, yeah. because I've grown attached to it, so I'm going to pull rank mm -hmm. and be like... She was here to protect me, so she has to keep doing that. But yeah. no, he was like, she was here to protect me, so we're both going. Yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> All right, 27. Oh, freaking Colin. Colin! <laughs> so Umbriel was like weeks away. Now it's going to be there in two days. Um, and he finds out that Atrobus was seen, and he was seen being abducted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so then we go to Atrobus, right? Yes. At, yes. Uh, so Hiram uh, teleports... Uh, he steps on a special sig sigil and he teleports to Umbriel. Yeah. And then, or he comes back. Right? Yeah, he comes back after teleporting and re-teleporting. And then the uh, rat was there and the rat's not longer there. Cause That's how Atrobus found out about it. Because he is Atrobus the Clever. Where'd the rat go? <laughs> <laughs> it was just also it. like the fact that quote that i wrote if you're gonna keep moving that mouth of yours it best be to tell me something useful so now uh hiram is trying to get information from atrobus yeah they're gonna opposite them of torture them in a way pleasure and pain so when atrobus tells him something that he wants to hear he gives this his this like magic euphoria. pleasure and euphoria. he gives but it like ecstasy. wrecks his brain because he craves it so hard yeah, because Sewell's like, oh my gosh, you're going to wreck this poor dude. So Sewell actually just tells Harem basically everything. Yeah, he's like, he's scared of us because I'm going to kill him. That's why. <laughs> and then kill he like sends pain to Sewell. Uh, then back to Adventures and Colin. Uh, Latrine returns after five days. So this boy has been checking back underground for five days. Um, but she's like, yeah, I didn't find anything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Colin is like, well, Atrobus is here and he's probably in Hiram's quarters. And she's like, let's go. Um, so they go and they see, they see Atrobus and Sewell in the cage. Um, and he's like, I'm gonna get Atrobus out. And he's like, Atrobus like, no, get, get Sewell out. And he's like, that's gonna be That's gonna take hard. a long time. because That locket spells. is complicated. <laughs> uh, then the plan is... Because Hiram went up to Umbriel again, so the Atrobus and Sewell are going to stand on the sigil and wait for Hiram to come down, and then once he comes down, they're going to go up. And then that's what happens. But Sewell's also there. They actually did Oh, there. Uh, yeah. He replaces... He yeah, he woke up. He is going to go stab his... I guess they got him out of Google? prison. I don't yeah. remember how they did that, but they got him out of prison. He replaces his sword with Umbra, and uh, he only killed... Kill cares about killing Wuhan and uh, is okay with going insane wheeling Umbra so and then Colin and his girlfriend are gonna hide and they're gonna kill Hiram yeah that's the plan yeah and so it happens and Hiram comes down and they go up um oh and so once he kills Wuhan Vile is supposed to take the city away from the imperial city um 28 yep Glenn wakes up 
and he can hear the trees. The trees say, I want to go home. And then he finds out what happened, and he's like, I'm not me anymore. I'm a copy. He's very pissed. Yeah, and... he's like, I'm just an experiment to you always, because every time she had a potion, he's the one that had to try it. So he's like, yeah. once again. And storms out. Etrebus contacts Anai via coup and tells her of his and Sewell's plan to use the sword against Umbra against Vuhan. Atrebus and Sewell wait for hours, and eventually his plan succeeds. He and Sewell are transported to Umbral. Uh, before that, uh, uh. Atrebus talks to Arise, the Colin's girlfriend, and he's like, you're part of the inner circle, so you knew this whole time. And she's like, yeah, we mm. did. And he's like, why? Why about this lie? And she's like, well, your father didn't know what to do with you. <laughs> oh... Um, and so Sewell was just going to go up by himself, and he's like, you need me. And then they're tele- teleported. Uh, Sewell stabs Vuhan. <laughs> Immediately. Like, right away. It's so good. But not, like, doesn't do anything. Doesn't kill him. No. So they, they fight. They fall onto what Sewell and Atrevis call a glass you forage. You dare bring that here. You think I'm afraid of that? A webbing made of glass-like material that Vuhan can control, and they continue to fight there. Atrebus is pinned and doesn't quite see what has happened, but suddenly everything shatters around them, and they fall into a water. Well, Atrebus, it does end up hitting him in the neck. And then he hits an artery, and he's like, oh no, I'm bleeding. And then they get th- dumped into the water. And the water, this is we're still in Umbreal. It's the lake that Glim swims in. Yeah, and that's why, because he's like, oh, I actually did hit him, so something is working. He is getting weak. Uh, Glenn takes a look down and sees that they're at the Imperial City. Uh, but the trees have shaped him in to do something. Um, and Anaig is killing the trees. She's put in the poison. Uh, wait, I'm not done yet. Oh, sorry. There's, like, way more to that. Uh, because Mir Glim is in his moping spot with his other girlfriend, Fenya, Fenya the dark elf lady. And Finya's like, and I loved you, you know, and you're she only trying to protect you. And he's like, yeah, I guess you're right. And when talking about how the hist shaped him, he suddenly comes to the realization about where he belongs, because he's like, I basically he's like, oh, I'm a part of Umbra now because I was born here. Well, yeah, and he, if he she kills the trees. I'm dead too. Because he, <laughs> yeah, he was reborn, so he's part of the city. But of course. She didn't think about that. She didn't think about that. So she, so he's like, I gotta stop her. He's up 29. 29. Back to Colin. He chickens out about killing Hiram. He's about to stab him in the neck, and then he has, like, a panic attack about the first guy that he killed. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we find out that the tower he's is... He's also key. from Anvil? Okay. I can't kill him, then. <laughs> um. So there's a big tower in the city, and that's the key to everything. There is stuff about the lore where it was an echo tower from, like, the... Not some Plato shit, but I don't know. Um, Hiram has a magic telescope, so Hiram hits uh, Colin with a demoralizing spell, He's leaving like, Colin so defenseless on the floor, wrapped up in his own misery. L- Latrine over here unsuccessfully tries to kill Hiram, and when Hiram tries to kill Latrine, Colin finds the strength to try and stop him, and uh, his attack distracts Hiram long enough for Latrine to send. Her Daedra after him, and he kills. She kills. Well, the Daedra kills Hiram. <laughs> Colin yes. helps uh, Latrine up, and she stabs him in the ribs because she is owned something. She gets like she's like ten years. I have waited ten years. I am owed something. She steals the Daedra weapon that Hiram has been using. The telescope. Leaves. Yeah. Uh, Anna Yig is killing the trees. Glenn is like, no, stop. Uh, the trees only want to go back home, Anna Yig. Yeah, she uh, knows. I was like, no, she knows best. She thinks she knows best. She doesn't understand what she Glenn is saying. is really having a freaking panic attack right yeah. now because he's like, don't kill the trees. She's like, there's too many people talking to me right now. Yeah. I just want to get off this thing. I just poisoned the trees. I can't stop it. I'm going to wait here. You guys figure it out. Yeah, Fenna says she's like, it'll kill everyone here, and that includes Glim. She's like, I don't know what to do. I mean, she kind of knew that yeah. because she has an antidote. So she knew that if she poisoned For the them, trees, yeah. then they would both die. So that's why she made the antidote. Um. Anyway, Atrobus is calling her on her pager. Yeah. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. It's Atrobus. 
Anyway, we're talking about Mazgar now. <laughs> she uh, is rowing across yes. the lake with Brennus and five other men. The dead in the lake uh, are, like, pulling them off the boat. Yeah, they're ma- uh, But they make it to shore, so they're mm-hmm. okay. Uh, and then... Oh. So they're, they join the group to fight, and one of the guys is about to die, and so he's like, you know what you have to do? And she's like, yes. They, so if your friend dies, not only do you have to chop off their head, but you have to chop off their arms, their hands, and their feet, because sometimes they come back without heads. Yeah, so. So they're learning. I mean, at that point, can you just chop off their, their limbs? And just their limbs? And leave their head? Yeah. And they can bite you? Oh. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Chapter oh, 30. Oh, I tried to so, uh, stop fighting to save Atribus. Yeah, they're in the Scraw Caves. Sul saves him instead of going after Vuhan, but since the sword wasn't working, he thinks something else caught Vuhan's weakness and figures that's probably Anaig's poison. It's the poison, and they need to find Anaig. So this is Atropus calling Anaig and telling her what happened. Anaig tells Glim what's going on and asks him to bring up Sul and Atribus, and he refuses yeah, unless she like saves the trees. She admits she, she has an antidote. And will administer it once Glim does what he's asked. And he's like, uh-uh, uh, give it to me first. Yeah, we're and not then, playing games anymore. And then I will uh, I'll do that. And he threatens to use force on her and then begs that she trusts him. They share a memory of when they were children and Anaig hands him the antidote. But then she says she didn't give it to Glim to save the trees. I'm like, then why does she give it to him? For Atribus? Um, uh, because they shared a memory. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, by the way, Sul still has the sword, which will be important later. Mir Glimpse finds Atribus and Sewell, and Wart finds him right after. Uh, they're interrupted by Umbril. So, Glim drinks the antidote himself. Mir yes. Glim realizes how sick the Scraw is, because he sees uh, Wart, or whatever. And Clarity comes over him, and he drinks the antidote, feeling a connection to the trees and the rest of Umbriel. He is the trees now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. Buhan finds Anaig. And says that he had to absorb real and the other lords to remain alive. Because <laughs> the, the poison went to the core. And so that's, he knew it was her. Um, and then Atribus is there. He attacks the her. together. She sliced his fingers with her hidden blade. And he's but like, his limbs grow back. <laughs> Glim returns with Atribus and Sewell. And Aiga reveals to Glim that she realized that Buhan's soul is the... In oh god, was it Ingium? Ingium. In, ingenium. Yeah, okay. it's the Ingenium at the bottom of the swamp. Uh, Atribus Never is thought I'd say those words. Like to, <laughs> to save uh, Anaig or to save the city, and uh, the city passed. Sewell summons Hi. a way, Hi, winged twilight to fight Vuhan and Soul. Atribus and Glim head down to the swamp. Atribus they got, they climb the trees first, right? Don't they climb the trees? And then he puts his face to the bark. Because he's trying to give them the antidote, but it's not working. Um, and then it's like, I was like, what is happening? Umbriel is fighting the tree mind belts, and because Glim is like, I can't. And then they jump in the water. Uh, Glim takes them to the in- Ingenium. Ingenium. Um, Sul is passed out again. And so after both <laughs> having a rough day, pull out the sword to stab the light they see. Uh, he immediately feels rage. Uh, now they're in the chamber, but so is Vu- Vuhan. Atribus does end up stabbing the Ingenium, which stops Vuhan, which is the beginning of chapter 31. Uh, yeah, when Umbra struck the heart of Umbriel and everything has changed. File suddenly possesses Atribus and points out that Sul and Atribus knew the price all along. Yeah, this is like, what? Sul argues that He's it's wearing not an super- Atribus suit is what I could describe Ew. it as. And Vile stabs him with Umbra. Stabs Vile. Yeah, so Atribus Vile <laughs> stabs Sewell with Umbra, and Sewell pulls himself further into Up, the sword. Yeah. And pushes he Atribus. Hits Atribus. And Vile lets the prince go. Sewell tells Atribus that everything's going to be okay as he falls into the Ingenium and vanishes. Yeah, so as soon as Atribus let go of the sword, then he's no longer got vile He's inside. giving his soul to clavicus vile uh buhan is trying to bargain with atribus um and it's up to glim to save the trees now that he can no longer do his mind melting yeah he's like the imperial city is still gonna get destroyed because this giant play is gonna fall on yeah. it uh anaig and umbrell start to fall so she and Fena uh 
she's like, I've got this flying potion. But they, I thought they drank it, but they don't drink it. So yeah, they're just she, climbing yeah. the tree. So, like, the, their plan is... Um, clinging to branches? Their only chance to save the city, basically, is to use the trees to bring Umbriel out of Tamriel... Uh, which I guess Glim can do? Yeah, because the trees want to go home, so he can... Because Vile was supposed to move the place back, but I don't think he's going to do that now. No, he's not going to do that. And so it's up to the trees and to Glim, and uh, she's like, I thought it was about me, but it's about you, isn't it? And Glim, this is sad, because he's like, I have people that need me. I have a place that wants me. I was mm-hmm. like, false Glim. <laughs> and finally found his uh, hero quest. Uh, and so Anna Yeeg and Atrobus take the flying potion. They dissolve into smoke, I think mm-hmm. is what her potion was. So they're leaving. Glim and Anna Yeeg have a nice little moment where they hug each other and tell each other they care about each other, but then they do. They separate. Mm-hmm. So uh, Colin is bleeding, and he remembers his youth. So there's something about making a boat. And he is able to get up because he's like, oh, I'm going to bleed to death. I'm going to drown in my own blood. So he follows. Yeah, might as well walk. <laughs> the, where Latrine, there's a secret staircase. Um, she wants the powers that's supposed to, as soon as Umbriel comes to the tower, it's supposed to give, it's supposed to give Hiram like a power of a god. And so she's like, it's mine. I want it for some reason. And then they have a conversation. He's like, so you do love me. I might have. <laughs> he throws a knife at her. He takes the knife out of his own rib cage and throws it and at it her. And it hits her in the eye. Right. And it kills her. Yeah. And the, I was like, did he die? Yeah, he died. He's dead. Colin is dead. All right. So, R.I.P. Uh, <laughs> so, Sewell's dead. Colin's dead. Colin's dead. Well, now we're back to Mazgar and Brennus. Uh, yeah. They get ready to fight. There's thousands of dead wormies. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are like basically just running up against the the wall of the city, and they're just climbing on top of each other, building a wall of dead people. Yeah, it's I feel crazy. like this was like Lord of the Rings type of thing with the orcs. What? Is it because there's orcs? It's not because they were like dying to build the wall so they could like climb on top of them. They were like grabbing yep. each other, making ladders. <laughs> yep. Brennus receives a mortal wound in a fight, and Masgar speaks to him, telling him that. He'd been right it. earlier. Yeah. She does want to have children after all. And he's like, that wasn't a proposition. She's like, I know. <laughs> I'm not going to have babies. You're you. ruining the moment. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm going to cut your head off now. <laughs> and then there's a crack. And so she turns and all of a sudden all the dead people aren't moving anymore. Mm-hmm. The city's gone, right? The umbrella's yeah. gone. The umbrella's gone. All the dead people have moved. She's like, did you see that, Brennus? But he's, he's dead. dead. Epilogue. And she cries. Mm-hmm. So, yet somebody else dies. Yep, Brennus dies. Three for three. A bug. It's party time. Atrobus meets with his father after Umbral's disappearance. He's like, sorry, I've been busy. Titus Mead <laughs> tells them, oh, you're a hero now. And Atrobus is like, no, I'm not, though. And Everyone I'm going to list a full name of people Did from everybody. <laughs> But Titus points out that he saved all of Tamriel despite being afraid the whole time. Yeah, he's like, you kept going, you could have given up. And he's like, you should take credit. And Atrobus starts playing politics because there are other people who want to take credit for it. And he's like, listen, you lost your head, dude. Like, mm-hmm. you need to uh, give these people credit. I don't want credit. Like, And then him and Anai talk about their feelings. They're riding horses. And it's awkward. It's super awkward. They don't seem like they actually kind of like each other. It looks like they're yeah. trying to make it work. This is why I said this is trauma bonding because uh, they both went through horrible things together, and that's they the never thing they have in common. Seem like they truly liked each other. They liked the He's idea. Like, this is what love is. I think they liked the idea of each other, and then they're like, "Well, I'm willing to get to know you a little bit." But better. they like love each other though. But like in like a shitty way. Yeah. It's kind of like. Oh, it's, it's a bad relationship. I don't know how it's going to last, but whatever. And they ride off into the sunset. Yeah. And then we go back to Glim. Glim and Fina are sitting together, and uh, Mere Glim comments that he thought that they'd be brought to Clavicus Vile's realm. That Fina they points out. They don't know out where they are. That while the city was found 
was from his realm, the trees weren't from his realm, so the trees but, just went back home, right? Because he's yeah. like, okay, trees, teleport. <laughs> yeah, they, they had power. I had power. Um, and then so... the other people in the city have left to go. There's a tower in the distance. And so this, I was like, is this the original to the echo of the tower of the... I don't uh, know. The Imperial City, because that's so. what they talk about with the lore... But he's like, can't wait to explore this place, so. Dun, dun. And then the, he hangs out with Fina. The and according end. to, because I got some of my notes from the, the Wikipedia mm. to, like, double check my stuff. Uh, and it says in the last sentence that he spends the night in Fina's arms. And I feel like that didn't happen. Because <laughs> he's not really into her. He say, There's a point that he makes where he's like, I'm not sexually attracted to her. Or, like, we're just kind of. We like we hanging out. We like hanging out with each other. Sleeping next to each other. Yeah. So, I don't know how that relationship's going, but yeah, that's the end of the book. Uh, next so. month, oh. we're watching... We're watching. We are watching, actually. <laughs> it's Wait, a combo. I'll be right back. My book is all the way across the room. <laughs> it's a combo episode. We are reading and watching Ratchet and Clank. This is the movie novel from Scholastic. Haven't we seen this movie? We have. Um, um, well, we kind of did. We played the game, which is just... Oh, it is. The- <laughs> it's just the movie. Uh, does this one have an author? It does. It's, it's Kate something. It's not on here, like, at all. Well, it's on the... Let me check. Let me check. Scholastic. No, they have it. <laughs> oh, adapted by Kate Howard from the screenplay by T.J. Fick. Okay, yeah. And Jerry Stallo and Kevin Monroe. So, yeah, we're going to watch the movie and read this tiny little book because I'm tired of reading. <laughs> There's uh, pictures in there, too. Next time. There's actually a, a smaller kid version of this, which is just, like, mostly pictures. And mm. I was like, maybe we should get both. And I was like, no, I'm not going to buy that. <laughs> this was hard enough to get. Because it's not available at Scholastic Book Fairs anymore. Okay. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye.